Hi. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Where are Greetings you in from Canada? Canada? I'm close to Toronto. Oh, you are, okay. I am, yeah. You're looking lovely. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. So we're gonna talk about the mayor of Kingstown, which is not a show for the faint of heart. Oh, well said. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. It is not for the faint of heart. It is, you know, really gang violence. It's really rough. And even the family part, which I kind of represent in one way, has just been torn to shreds. You know, it's just, uh, uh, I, I don't think that Miriam, my character, even believes in family anymore. After her husband was shot and her oldest boy was shot, she just, uh, for whatever reason, can't stand her, other, her two live sons. You know, I think she's too afraid she's going to lose them in this incredible prison system that's going on. And you perform with so many strong characters on the show. It was really amazing, the writing that went into all of the people that are, are in the show. Yes. You play an educator on, on the show um, at a, a women's prison. Was, what interested you about taking on a role like that? Well, I have been interested and in, uh, active in a very small way in the prison system in America, which is really abysmal. And um, so I was immediately drawn to the to, to mayor of Kingstown because that's what it's about. You know, the racism, the horrible racism and the poverty and the constant injustices in our justice system. Um, so I, I was very, very interested and interested to try and reach by teaching to try and give these disenfranchised souls a spark of something other than what they've always known, which is, you know, cruelty and violence and poverty. And to say there's something out there that you can latch on to if you allow yourselves that will make your perspective change and you give it a wider view and maybe from that, you can heal a little bit. Nice. One of the scenes that really stuck out for me, you were in class telling a story about dogs trying to jump oh. into the water and get to oh. their owners. And yes. that can't have been much on the printed page. And it's just one of the scenes that really stuck with me when the series ended. It was one of my yes. favorites. Yeah, that, that, that haunted me. That story still haunts me. Yeah, and I, I don't, I believe it's true. He didn't, uh, Taylor didn't make that up. It, he heard it from uh, a Native American and, um, and, and did write it, you know, to put in the show. But it's heartbreaking. It just a, an example of the random cruelty of... Yeah. And it, I mean, you, you deliver that scene right before you find out that one of your sons is no longer with us. And it just felt um, like foreshadowing, uh, yeah. for lack of a better word. It, was, yeah. it, it felt like a foreshadowing to me too. A loss of something so, so deeply cherished. Do you find that happens a lot when you're, when you're reading scripts where you'll just look at something and not know how it's going to come off and then when you see the finished the finished cut you are impressed by it or you see something magical in it um i i i don't know if i see i i can't look at myself very well anymore i um i used to be able to just look because i was so i wanted to learn and so look at what I was doing wrong. And so I had some kind of an objectivity that I have certainly lost um, as I age. And, and maybe it's just, you know, listening to the sound of your voice, how that could be so irritating to the person who owns the voice. And likewise, looking at yourself can just be so, you know, really terrible. 
Um, so I don't know anymore. Uh, I, I depend on what other people and what you would say about it, whether it was any good or not, move people or not. I, I can no longer judge. Right. I'm I mean, curious. I know when I'm doing it, if something is right or wrong, uh, I know if it's false or true when I'm in the moment doing it, but I can't tell you afterwards whether that was wonderful or whether that was not so interesting. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. That I don't have a brain in my head. <laughs> I'm curious if there are moments during the filming of this show that stick out for you, um, something that happened or something that you felt translated really well and that you um, are proud of. Yes, I think the moment um, where Jeremy comes over, I, I, can't, I think it's in the first episode, although I'm not sure, um, after my son, my older boy has been killed and shot and killed, Jeremy comes over and I tell him that to please leave this town because the exact same thing is gonna happen to him. It's happened to his father, as happened to his brother. And um, that sticks with me. That scene sticks with me, in large part because of Jeremy also, who's such a remarkably truthful actor. Thanks. I like the color palette used in the show. It's very cold, uh, mm -hmm. metallic looking. Um, yes. I mean, it, it suits the, the, the content of the show so well. Yes. I wore red lipstick once and nobody said, I said, oh, let's have red lipstick when I went to teach at the university. And everybody who saw the, 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 the rushes or it had a fit because the color red was in the series. I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. You know, so it's interesting that you say color palette. What is your favorite thing about playing Miriam? Um, the fact that she's free to say and do things without respect or regard for how they might fall on another person. You know, she just says whatever she's thinking. Uh, luckily, she's bright. So you can argue she could be wrong, she could be right, but she, she usually has a valid point. And that's very freeing not to uh, be concerned about how the other person is gonna take it, which I, I'm overly concerned with in, in life and in other ways of acting, you know, to say, just buzz off, buddy. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, and can, lastly, can you talk a little bit about what it's like to be a, a part of a show that is, um, has elements of violence, coldness, um, systemic, you know, criminal underminings. Do you find that you take that home with you or do you just walk away from the set and go back to your regular life? Um, you, you try and walk away, but it casts a pall. Uh, over all of us, you know, everything. It, it's not a jolly makeup and hair trailer. It's not, you know, we do try and, and make other people laugh just for relief from it. But it's, it's, um, it's a dark world. It's a dark, dark world. And somebody's always getting shot. Somebody's getting beat up. Somebody's, you know, so makeup is always making up blood, blood bags. And here, squeeze the blood bag now. And um, a lot of stunt people come in to help you. Thank God, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it definitely casts a pall. Super. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank Great to you talk to so you. much. Great to talk to you. Take care of yourself. Cheers. Cheers.